From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America. I am Keith Allen and proudly welcoming you to this Thursday's edition of For the People. It's May the 18th. It's 2017. And we do have some uh, sad news to report. Roger Ailes, the uh, founder of Fox News Channel, dead at 77. He uh, was friends to many presidents and uh, was definitely an advisor to uh, many Uh, who started the Fox News Channel to promote a Republican agenda and build it into a most-watched U.S. cable news network uh, before resigning amid the sexual harassment allegations. He's dead at 77, and some very moving tributes today on the Fox News Channel, beginning with their hosts in the morning with uh, Ainsley and Steve and Brian, very emotional. And uh, then one from uh, one of the hosts that actually is suffering from MS. But um, I I feel like it's uh, very befitting to uh, hear um, this tribute because Roger Ailes was a pioneer. Roger Ailes was human. And he made a mistake. And maybe he made several, I'm sure, throughout his life. But to put him in a corner and say that he was just no good because of one particular thing, um, we judge. And unfortunately, I hope Roger Ailes is not remembered for allegations of sexual harassment, but more for the work that he did, in my opinion, and so many other hosts out there that I would agree with, Sean Hannity, that... um, helped America in so many different ways keep the conservative agenda going and what an impact the Fox News Channel has, in fact, made. Here's some audio this morning from a little while ago from the Fox host that uh, hosts Fox and Friends. Here they are. Former CEO Roger Ailes passed away this morning, and we just want to remember him. He is dead at the age of 77 years old this morning. Right. right. And this is the statement from uh, Elizabeth Ailes. She says, I'm profoundly sad and heartbroken to my report that my husband, Roger Ailes, passed away at the uh, passed away this morning. Roger was a loving husband to me, to his son, Zachary, and a loyal uh, friend to many. He was also a patriot, profoundly grateful to live in a country that gave him so much opportunity to work hard, to rise and to give back during a career that stretched over more than five decades. His work in entertainment, his work in politics and in news affected the lives of many millions. And so even as we mourn his death, we celebrate his life. Indeed. Uh, Roger Ailes helped build Fox News Channel into the powerhouse it is today. Um, Roger would tell stories during our State of the Business um, meetings that he would hold twice a year here at Fox News about how he started in the in the business. He was actually a production assistant uh, at stations in Cleveland and Philadelphia. He eventually worked his way up to run the Mike Douglas show. In three years, he went from PA to EP of the most successful daytime talk show maybe ever. That's he right. got the biggest guest to arrive in Ohio and do his show from Bob Hope Ro- on down. Roger believed in hard work. He ran four political campaigns. Many people out there would say that he saved this country by starting the Fox News Channel. Roger gave every single one of us on this couch an opportunity. He put food on our table. And, you know, he went out in such a sad way. But who doesn't have sins? We all have our sins. We all have our cross to bear. And, Roger, I will love you forever. You gave me an opportunity, and I will forever, ever, ever be grateful. I know I would not have gotten this job if it weren't for you. And, and I ter- hope that you rest in peace, Roger, and I hope that you are at peace. 
I know that his impact on the country is, a, um, is beyond a shadow of a doubt. You think that he saw Nixon in a green room, That's saw, right. saw, Nixon Blue, saw, him as, yeah, saw him as an underdog guy, says you got to like television. Next thing you know, he's helping Richard Nixon get elected. Didn't George he help Bush, Nixon? 41. He said you got to change your, your message, and he started talking to him. He said you can't hate television. It's not going away. Right. It's not a fad. Yeah. Right, because, um, and then essentially later when he was serious about running for president again, Richard Nixon called up uh, Roger Ailes and said, how would you like to help me? And Roger uh, did some political consulting for a while. Uh, he then, after political consulting, and he helped uh, pe uh, candidates at all levels of uh, the political spectrum, he wound up uh, running CNBC. Mm -hmm. uh, and at one point at it, CNBC, they started a new cable channel called America's Talking. Uh, Roger's wife, Beth Ailes, hired me, and I then uh, went to work there. That's where I met Roger and uh, worked for him. And then after I left CBS, Roger said, you need a job? We're looking for some folks for this new thing called the Fox News Channel. And Roger hired me to come here. And no one gave as well. And yeah, Steve, and very few people knew him as well as uh, you well, and your family. Well, I got to know him through his, uh, his wife because she had hired me. And, uh, you know, the, the thing about Roger is he has... He was a big personality, and he, uh, you know, you would go to his meetings, and you would just love hearing the stories mm -hmm. about, he'd talk about, what, you know, I had all the jobs of everybody in this room, which would be true, because he started at the bottom and worked his way up. He gave up great from, advice. And when we were all at our hardest times, he was, he was there for me when I went through some really hard times. Janice, you okay? Good. You want to say anything to no, that? No, I wouldn't be here without that man, and uh, when I was diagnosed with MS, he got on the phone and said, whatever we can do for your family, because we were all part of a family. And, you know, he was a presence, and he will be missed on this channel. He will be missed. Well, and, uh, of course, born in Warren, Ohio, he considered himself a lunch pail guy, a blue-collar guy in a white-collar position. Roger Ailes passed away at the age of 77. Uh, we just found out this morning. Uh, we'll be talking about that throughout the day. Rest in peace, Roger. And Janice Dean, uh, the lady that you just heard from with the MS, I mean, what a pronouncement, um, you know, especially if you're an on-air host and Roger Ailes was right there to carry her through it, still part of the Fox family, and they call her Janice Dean, the weather machine. So, you know, there's a lot of good in Roger Ailes, and whatever these allegations are, um, you know, there's guys that, uh, and I've mentioned this about Bill O'Reilly, who uh, was let go because of sexual allegations as well. Lots of that in the TV business. And if you've ever watched the Anchorman, I mean, uh, this stuff happens in many, many, if not 99% of TV stations across the country. And a lot of places, it's simply not tolerated. Um, and that's a good thing. Uh, but it happens and it's not a good thing. And I'm not uh, saying that uh, Roger should not have stepped down. Um, he did. Um, this is just shocking news to uh, many that uh, loved to watch the Fox News Channel, also Fox News Radio. Um, just a, a super legend. Um, meant a lot to so many different people, including yours truly here at For the People. It uh, is given news, um, a conservative voice for conservatives that increasingly, because of the liberal media, are not allowed to be able to have our opinions heard and to have hosts on that network that echo the sentiments of us. It is huge because you can't find it. You just, you just simply can't find it anywhere else. I mean, the liberal media is definitely, uh, I mean, come on, ABC, CBS, uh, you name it, ABC, CBS, NBC, all of them are against it. PBS, I mean, all of them are liberal. CNN, I mean, especially. But the major networks are to the left. We're in completely in bed with Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, in bed with, you know, Bill Clinton, I mean, we used to call CNN the Clinton News Network. And then when Fox came out and I was hosting a uh, broadcast from White Springs, Florida, uh, for Talk America Radio Networks and uh, doing stuff for the People's Network, I remember them coming on and it was just so refreshing to hear hosts that actually, again, had conservative values. 
uh, it was just unfounded. You just couldn't find it. So major kudos and rest in peace, Roger Ailes, for all you've done for this country and uh, for the world to uh, to know that there are people out there that are like minded, have values, love this country, and care. And Roger Ailes cared and uh, cared about how people receive the news and uh, understood the medium better than anyone, really, when it came to graphics, when it came to uh, the, the presentation, the story, getting it right, and uh, presenting something that uh, was worthwhile that actually made a difference. And he did, in fact, make it made a difference. Roger Ailes, once again, the founder of Fox News Channel, dead at 77. Lots of uh, memorials on Fox News Channel, remembrance pieces, and hosts that uh, came on, Sean Hannity, very touching. Um, Sean was very transparent this morning and just remembering Roger Ailes when he first started because Sean, like myself, started in radio and had done some television, but admittedly listened to some tapes and they were horrible. And all of us <laughs> getting into radio, we listen to stuff and we say to ourselves, why would anybody give us a chance? But Roger Ailes had this uncanny ability to be able to see the potential in people. He was a real visionary. And, you know, Sean Hannity, you know the rest of the story, but Sean wasn't all that good on television because he wasn't a TV guy. You can be a radio person, then you're, you're a TV guy. It's a completely different media. And admittedly, he would say his radio show was horrible. Uh, but Roger gave him a chance, and he's given dozens and do you know hundreds, thousands of people opportunities and paychecks. So a lot of people pay homage today for this guy uh, that started it all. Roger Ailes, rest in peace. Uh, there was a piece over the weekend that many of you did not get to hear. You may have heard that the president gave a speech at Liberty University, and we want to play that speech so you can hear uh, most of it will play today to hear it. This was an unbelievable speech. It was really more of a homecoming because Jerry Falwell and Liberty University opened up their doors when then he was presidential candidate. And came in, and it was very controversial, um, you know, for any pastor, evangelical. But it was powerful because, you know, Jerry and his uh, university, the largest evangelical Christian university in the country, very prestigious. The curriculum is awesome. But to hear the message that he had for its students that were graduating was unbelievable. And I think it's a message that every American should personally take to heart. That's why. I'm airing it today. There's so much bad news uh, out there. So many people ganging up against this president for allegations, things that simply are just unfounded, not true. No matter what uh, intelligence that was given from his advisors, his senior White House people have come forward and said nothing was uh, shared, nothing was um, you know thrown out that uh, would tell to stop the investigation, but they're just going to make up stuff to just try to discredit this fame. Um, thank goodness that Paul Ryan, with his fortitude, smart enough to step up to the mic banks and say, we're working, we're doing other things, even though the media is fixated on these items to, again, diminish, devalue the presidency of Donald Trump. The House is working diligently for the American people, which is good news. All right, here is the speech from this past Saturday at Liberty University with Donald Trump. Thank you very much, everybody. And congratulations to the class of 2017. That's some achievement. This is your day, and you've earned every minute of it. And I'm thrilled to be back at Liberty University. I've been here, this is now my third time, and we love setting records, right? We always set records. We have to set records. We have no choice. It's been a little over a year since I've spoken on your beautiful campus, and so much has changed. Right here, the class of 2017, dressed in cap and gown, graduating to a totally brilliant future. And here I am standing before you as President of the United States. So I'm guessing there are some people here today who thought that either one of those things, either one, would really 
require major help from God. Do we agree? And we got it. But here we are celebrating together on this very joyous occasion. And there is no place in the world I'd rather be to give my first commencement address as president than